Cricket Life Stories with me, Neil Kagram. Today we're joined by Julian Wood. Julian, how's things going on this oh, sunny day? It is, it's good. Lovely, thank you. Uh, good to have some sun. Um, so let's dive straight into it. A bit about your career before we get into the power hitting masterclass. You played for Hampshire before moving to the coaching world. Talk us through it. Um, yeah, played for Hampshire as a, as a top order batter, attacking batter. Um, it was funny how during my playing career, I got told no a lot because I was a big shots player and back in the late 80s, early 90s, that was sort of frowned upon. Um, but now, if you look where the game's gone, it's, uh, it's the way the game's gone, basically. Um, so as, I, as my playing career, I, was, I felt restricted. And when I, then I just naturally moved into coaching um, to stay in the game. Um, uh, but as I started coaching, I felt restricted as well. But then T20 came along and then it all changed. Talk and us through your main philosophies when it comes to powerlifting and how it differs from other coaches. Um, the, the first thing you need is, is, is your, it's the foundation's the same, right? The foundations for batting, for me, a rhythm, balance and a, an alignment. Um, cricket was always very hand dominant. Um, now we're looking at players want more power because the game's dictating that. But you need to have rhythm, you need to have balance, and you need to have alignment, whether you're batting or whether you're ball striking. Um, so the philosophy is, is get your foundation first and then you expand. So what I do is put layers on top of players. So they have different options, power options, skill options, to score more runs. And you've worked with England before, as well as other several yeah. high profile international players? Yeah, I worked with England ODI T20 squad, um, Australia. Um, I've been around the franchise setup, which is a different world. Um, uh, lots of counties, lots of players Sam Billings, Joe Root, Carlos Brathwaite. And now the blast is just about to start now, so players are starting to come to me now. I saw Liam Dawson yesterday, I'm seeing a couple of more next week. So it's good, it's good fun. And for those who wanted to get in touch with you, to find out more about your coaching? Yeah, just go to coach at jwcricket.com. Um, it's the JW Cricket Academy. Uh, we run courses um, all year round and just come and have a load of fun. And, gain more options and gain more power simple yeah we'll put all the links in the description below so please check it out but for now julian can't wait to get into this power hitting masterclass mate it's good fun let's uh, go so julian we've got your son here to hand as well yeah we have he's done a lot of this so uh, he should be quite good at it um what i look for when i look at young players uh, the first thing i look at is their hands all right if they can generate elite hands as i call it now Elite hands are when you lift it up, you lift this bat up from there, that's it, get to here and you start to create a box from shoulder, elbow, hands, back. Okay, so we'll start down here, but then when he loads up to hit the ball, that's what I'm looking for, that position there. Okay, that is elite hands. If you look at a lot of the, the Indians, they do it very naturally and they have that little wave at the top. All right, so it's your bottom hand really. A lot of players, a lot of coaches talk about top hand, right? But if you look at what your bottom hand does, it's like this, you're almost flicking that bottom hand. So it's like that, and then when I repeat that, so I've got my bottom hand here, like that. That's my bottom hand is like this. When I pick the bat up, it's the same movement, all right? So it's not just your top hand, your bottom hand. You have to cock that as well, so you get into that box position. That allows you, I can strike the ball, I can also leave it, I can defend it, I can do anything. I can push for one, but I'm in a great position where I can strike the ball. Okay, so what we'll do here with Kieran is these tap weighted balls, they're different weights. There's 21 ounce, 14 ounce, and seven ounce. They're soft, they sit on the bat for a long time. So for contact, they're brilliant. You really have to get your hands through the ball. If he gets it wrong, the ball rolls off the bat instead of him hitting. You want the bat face to be square, square to the ball. Get that? And then you got that, that was good. That's it, good. And start to get his hands. Good looking. We're just starting to load him up a little bit, all right? So, and then 
we introduce a weighted fat now. So this is 20% heavier than a normal fat. So what he's going to do, he's going to stand here and try and hit that, smash that as a, as a drive, yeah? Then what we'll do, he's going to do that six times. Then he'll come in here, he'll use that fat for that. Then he'll come in here and I'll give him a weighted fat. He'll use a, the 20 percent heavier bat with the blue balls and then they'll use a lighter bat with the yellow balls all right so we're starting to just overload overload his technique Four, five, six. Six. good and what that does you want the bat face to be slapping into that to that punch bag, you don't want it coming around here. Like when he was playing to start with, he was a little bit across, but that encourages him to hit through. Another way you could do it is if I twist that round now. Okay, so because I turn this round, he's got to be a bit more precise with that. It's just loading him up a little bit. Green one. Good. Just loading his hands up with obviously the heavy fat and the heavy balls. Good. Yeah, through the ball, right. Good. One more. Good. Now use the other bat, bass. Okay, so some of his hands become slightly snappier through the ball. One more. Okay. Because there's the, obviously the weight in the bat, he then uses his normal bat, which is lighter. So suddenly his hands become slightly more snappier. All right, so what we've just done there is overloaded slightly. Okay, so what we would do then going forward is a heavier bat. You just go heavier bats, heavier balls. All right, the more advanced they get right so you're just constantly overloading the technique all right so let's go back on the machine i know there's that uh, the phrase is power hit but the game you have a power game you have a skill game you have a touch game um an area that I look at with the skill and touch is uh, I use a, a hurling stick. The reason I use a hurling stick is if you look at the cricket bats there, they're so thick, right? They're really thick. This thing's like nothing, it's like cardboard, all right? When you hold a cricket bat, the first thing you want to do, you pick up someone's bat, you sort of just, you might play a full defensive or a back foot drive. When you hold one of these, you want to sort of use your wrist. So when you look at players like Joss Butler, Sam Billings, they do that very naturally. So what I try and do is replicate it, try and encourage players to be wristy by introducing this. So I use a hurling ball. The reason I use a hurling ball is quite simple. It's meant to be hit by a hurling stick. And also there's, there's a big seam on it. So when I bobble the ball down, it just moves about. So it makes it slightly harder. All right. So, and this is all about one day cricket to me is hand-eye coordination, skill and power. Okay, and like we spoke about earlier on with those, trying to create those elite hands, if you can get these hands up nice and high, all right, that's what I call elite hands. Those players have to be coached differently than the guys who are very mechanical, all right, because I think they need to get close to the ball. The alignment for them is so important, because when players have these elite hands and they go up, you don't have to get as close to the ball because you're relying on your hand-eye coordination. Right, so here, what we've got, four targets. I'm just gonna bobble the ball to Dubs. He's gonna get nice and low, he'll flick it up, and then he'll move to create an angle to hit the goals, okay? The key to this is, you have to be quick, all right? The ball dictates how quick you are, all right? So if you're slow, you can't do this, all right? So he gets nice and low. Right, this bit, when you flick the ball up, that's hand-eye coordination. Hand-eye coordination is skill, and then suddenly this bit now it gets to batting when you're moving your feet and you're trying to create angles to hit the ball into gap.
basically lined up for that. The good thing is the offside. All right, so what he does, he opens his body up. And what happens when you've got these elite hands, your bottom hand basically opens up to allow you to create angles to hit the offside. Great against seamers, great against spin. All right, so you've got your power. This is purely skill based. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got some target hitting, um, some targets. Um, what we're doing here, ball, ball on the tee, it's just gonna, it's quite full, so it's gonna go forward. Um, looking at the head position, of where the head position is to hit, if you're hitting the reds, or you're hitting the yellow and green, or we're hitting the blue, all right? So it's all about, and then angles to try and create where you're gonna hit the ball, okay? Similar to what we did with the hurling stick. Okay, so you need your bottom hand is crucial in this. Again, we're looking at, I'm looking at his elite hands, trying to create elite hands. And then when he goes offside, his bottom hand will open up a bit to create an angle to go on the L's. Or well, the R's for him, because he's a, he's a right hander. All right, but let's just see how he does. Let's hit a couple first. Okay, good. One more. Okay, so really emphasizing getting his body into the shot, all right, but really emphasizing those hands, all right? And also, if you get, just stand in your stance there, so if he gets a good sight of the ball, all right, what I mean by that is, you know, if you're too closed off, or even if you're too, you're very square, right, you don't get a good sight of the ball, all right? So if you're slightly open, which he is, what that allows you to do is I get more body into the shot. Okay, so power comes from the ground up. So if I'm really, if I'm closed off, or if I'm really square on, really square here, my legs are square, then basically I can't really get my body into the shot. I'm using, I'm very hand dominant. Okay, I'm timing the ball, which is fine, but we want to try and add a bit of power. So if we're slightly open, and I get better vision of the ball, better sight of the ball, then I can really get my whole body into the shot. L1. Yeah, go C2. There we go, good. Now go R2, difficult one, over cover. Gonna open his, good. Gonna open his hands up, let's go again, R2. Yeah, lovely. So if you look there, that one, brilliant. He hasn't got too close to the ball. If you get too close to the ball, you crowd the ball. So he's opened up, and then his bottom hand is opened up as well. That creates that angle for the ball to go over cover. Okay, so now we look at his head position. So if he goes C0, just hold it, hold the shot. Okay, look at his head, great position. Head over knee over front foot, okay? Brilliant position, all right, to keep the ball down. Then we go C2, all right, C2 now. Just look where his head's gonna be. Just hold it. Okay, look, so now his head, because he's looking to hit the ball up, his head's over his back hip, which is over his back knee. Great position. Foot is slightly angled. Okay, the reason his foot is slightly, his front foot is slightly angled is that it keeps his hands back behind him. All right, it will keep his hands behind him. If he's open like that, his hip comes through already and his head starts to go that side of the ball. Plus his hands, when he lifts the bat up, his hands will move forward. All right, so if we just get into that, just get into the position where you, you've just finished. So there, great position there. If he opens up, yeah, now it's harder to keep balance. He struggles there. All right, so that's why the front foot angle is very important because it keeps your hands behind you. All right, and it allows your back leg, the power comes from your back leg. It allows that to drive into that front leg. L0. Good, there you go, C2. Now his head position is good. Let's go R2. Yeah, good stuff. See, great position. Head over back, hip over back, knee. Creates a positive impact on the ball. Where I mean positive, I mean aerial. Okay, now we're gonna look at just back of a length or a bit shorter. Okay, so we've gone full. Now we're gonna go length ball. If you can hit a length ball, you can hit anything. All right, the key to hitting a length ball is hitting it early, hitting the ball, let the ball come, but let it hit, get the ball out in front of you. Okay, so what 
we're going to look at now is, is ball striking a shorter ball like length like we've just seen on the machine. Okay, so what I do here is I've got a punch bag here with numbers on. So he will go, we'll do this as a warm up first before we get into the overloading and everything. All right, with more weighted balls, weighted bats. And then I start to overload his back hip as well. All right, so with the warm up here, he's gonna hit eight times. He's gonna go four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four. All right, really emphasizing speed, power, but really looking at getting that bottom half engaged now, driving that back leg, that back leg into his front leg. Okay, so what we're looking at now is overloading his back leg. Power comes from the ground up. So this is engaging his hip. And we're trying to, what we're trying to do is connect his lower half to his top half, all right? We've worked a lot on those elite hands, getting those hands in that position, all right? Start creating that box. And now what, when you start to play the shot, the first thing that moves is your hip. Your hip will go first and you generate that separation. The bigger the separation, the, more, the quicker your hands will move. Okay, so what I've really loaded up here is back hip. We've got bungees on here. Okay, so we've got three bungees. Okay, again, you can, depending on if you're working with a youngster, you might have one, two, three, if there's more, you know, the big guys. We'll stick five on. Okay, and then we've got the weighted balls. So we've just gone up a bit with the weighted balls now. So we've got a four pound ball soft if you get these wrong they literally go behind you all right so we've got a four pound ball with a four pound bat all right you will have a silver ball which is three pound with the yellow bat which is 40 percent heavier than the normal bat then you'll go blue balls with the green bat which is 20 percent and then we'll go normal bat with yellow balls and then what he'll do is we'll go right down to the three ounce ball with a one pot, about 13 bat, which is as light as a feather. When he gets to that, he'll take it off, take the bungee off, and then you'll see a big difference. His hands will really start, start to fly. Here we go. Good. Step, good, step into the shot. Good, there you go. Brilliant, that's a good start, right? The yellow bat now. Good. Here we go, a bit lighter now. Good, finish the shot with your hands. Good, that's it. Finish the shot. Good, one more. Brilliant, good. Let's go green back now. He's good. Lighter ball, lighter back. His hands now start to get quicker. Good. Good, one more. Good, okay, now your back. So we're back now down to the 14 ounce ball. Good, his hands are quicker now. Good. Hit against that brace front leg. One more. Yeah, great shot. Now take it off. Okay, so now he's taking everything off. He's now got to control his movements, all right? Because what happened, because he's been restricted, he could almost fly out of his boots at this. All right, so he has to control the movement and the timing and generate that power through the ball. My hands through. Good. Good. One more. Okay. One more. Good. When you do this work, you always finish uh, with cricket balls with a normal bat. Okay. Okay. So. We've just overloaded him um, on the power hitter with the heavy balls, um, weighted balls, weighted bats. Now we're gonna transfer. The sooner you can transfer that into this, right, the, the, the better it is, all right? So try not to leave it. After you've hit a load of heavy balls, try not to leave it an hour or so. Just try and get straight into on a machine or side arm, all right, because then it will transfer quicker into your game. Um, what we're going to do, what he'll do as well, if when you play in T23, you face 20 balls, you don't hit 18 fours or 18 sixes. All right, but what we do, I'll put you in a position to hit 18 fours and 18 sixes. 
All right, but what you need to do is if the ball bounces a bit, you need to adjust. So what Kieran will do, if the ball does bounce, you'll see he'll roll with it. All right, so he realizes he can't, he has to make a decision. He realizes he can't hit it, hit it for four or six. So he will take the single instead. All right, but when the ball is there to strike, he will strike it. So Julian, amazing session. Some closing words from you? Um, the game's dictating how we play. Um, the game's dictating how we coach. All right, so some of the drills you've seen, um, to me, this is the way the game is going. All right, so when you, you know, the terminology has changed in the game. Um, you know, so it's all about hand speed, there's power hitting, there's hand speed, there's ball exit speed, there's exit velocity. All right, so the wording has changed. Now, it's a data driven game now. All right, so when I played, you either had quick hands or you didn't. Nobody mentioned as someone how slow someone's hands were. It was all about how quick people's hands are. Now you hopefully you've seen that you can actually work on hand speed and increase hand speed. All right, but like I said, the big thing today is the game is dictating how you play. So then the game is dictating how you coach. All right, so you have to evolve with the game. Cheers, guys.